Well, folks, we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch 2 today because it's actually been a while since we've made a dedicated video on Switch 2 because it's been a long time since we've had anything to talk about, right? The rumors have really dried up for the Nintendo Switch 2 ever since president of Nintendo Shintaro Furukawa put out there on Twitter that, hey, the Nintendo Switch successor will have some sort of announcement within the current fiscal year that ends in March of 2025. So if you look at the calendar right now, it's July 6th second that's about nine months so sometime in the next nine months we will hear about nintendo's new platform that is a promise from the very top of nintendo now there was nothing at the last direct about it and yeah they actually told us several times there would be nothing about the new system in that direct but we do have some stuff that came out of the shareholders meeting last week and reality is that you know what what our shareholders focused on how you're going to launch the platform and so nintendo did talk about the launch of nintendo switch 2 and look we got a couple articles we're going to be going over here because in the end, we really need to worry about how is Nintendo going to do certain aspects of their system, right? We could talk about how, what improvements they could make over Switch or the launch lineup or when they're going to reveal it. That's all important stuff. But from a consumer level, what we want to know is, hey, what about the scalpers, right? The scalpers always ruin our day. They've been ruining it in 2020, 2017. We actually had a shortage on Switches for a few months due to scalpers. So what is Nintendo going to do to combat this very thing? Well, they have a very simple plan, but one that is quite fascinating and is a little bit business risky. We'll talk about that in a moment. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you, we are looking to get to 150,000 subscribers this year. So, hey, look, if you are really enjoying this video and you want to watch more Switch 2 content, other big Nintendo news, appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel, drop a like, and go down in the comments below and let me know your biggest concern for Nintendo Switch 2 or whatever they call this thing. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in here to this article over at Video Game Chronicle written by Chris Scullion. It says, Nintendo says it wants to avoid Switch 2 scalping by making enough to meet demand. It's actually a bit more uh, forward than just enough to meet demand. Uh, he says he doesn't think component shortages would be an issue. You get down here, it says Nintendo says the best way to stop scalping of the Switch successor is to make enough of them in the first place. In a Q&A during a general meeting of shareholders, the company's execs were asked what measures they were taking to stop reselling of its next console. Given that at least year, I think they mean last year's meeting, they said they were planning to do so. Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa replied that the company's main plan for combating scalping is to make sure players don't have to turn to resellers because they can buy a console at retail. Furukawa said that as a countermeasure against resale, Nintendo believes that the most important thing is to produce sufficient numbers to meet customer demand. In addition, the president said Nintendo was also considering whether it could take some other measures taking into account the circumstances of each region. Furukawa also noted that the semiconductor shortage that affected numerous companies' ability to produce new hardware in recent years is no longer an issue. Last year and the year before, we were unable to produce sufficient quantities of Nintendo Switch hardware due to a shortage of semiconductor components, but this situation has now been resolved, he explained. At present, we do not believe that the shortage of components will have a significant impact on the production of the successor model. Nintendo confirmed in May that it will announce the next console this fiscal year, meaning the Switch's successor will be revealed by the end of March of 2025 at the latest. And that is something that Furukawa sort of hinted at last year that their big plan to combat scalping is hey, we're just going to make so many of these damn things, so many that it's practically undeniable that you're going to be able to buy one at retail. Uh, that is a very bold strategy because that basically means flooding the market. And flooding the market at the launch of something can have its benefits, right? That if you want to combat scalping, make there be so many of them that they're easy to get, right? That is the benefit. The negative is if the system ends up not being a high demand platform and you flood the market, things end up not selling, and then you got to quickly reduce prices in order to sell units. Retailers lose money. Nintendo loses money. So you don't want to overstock at launch. You don't want to over-anticipate demand. But 
Who knows? We don't have the thing revealed yet. We don't even know what the hype is going to be for this platform. We don't know what the anticipation is, what pre-order numbers are. So that Nintendo is going to have all that information before the system even comes out to know, hey, should we be shipping out, you know, 5 million of these things at launch? Or should we be more reserved and maybe just go with a million or two? Kind of fascinating just to see how Nintendo plans to balance that because naturally they don't want and we consumers don't want to be like, hey, look, this thing is sold out before it even hits store shelves, and the only way you can get it for like a month is if you spend twice or sometimes three times as much on an eBay listing. That is not, uh, at least here in the U.S., what we want to see. Now, another article popped up here uh, that I thought was interesting to go over because it talks about will the Switch 2 be a success as Nintendo repairs or as Nintendo prepares for a 2025 release, which technically we don't know 100% for sure if it's actually releasing next year. I think it's a pretty safe bet. Um, but I wanted to read this article because I feel like it provides another interesting talking point with Switch 2, especially in regards to dealing with this whole scalping situation. So we're over here on this website, and uh, it says, Great news for aspiring Switch 2 owners. It comes from Rail Hornby, and it says Nintendo Switch 2 is one of the most anticipated handheld gaming releases on the horizon, and it has some mighty shoes to fill following the success of the original Switch hybrid handheld slash home console. However, a history of supply chain issues for manufacturers has led to worries around Switch 2's eventual release, reflecting on the releases of other major consoles, such as PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Will Nintendo be able to meet the demand? So you can see where they're getting into some of the stuff that we already covered. Um, and yeah, Nintendo is very confident. So here's what we do know. Avoiding the pitfalls of the PlayStation Portal. Sony's release of the PlayStation Portal handheld remote play device was a huge news for console fans and even bigger news for those seeking to profit over them. The handheld device was almost constantly out of stock on release, with scalpers seeking to swoop in early and claim stock for themselves before reselling at a higher price. As reported by gaming site Video Game Chronicle during a QA, a portion of a recent general meeting they talked about the entire thing that we just went over so it says well this is great news for those looking to jump on the switch shoe bandwagon early on it's possible that nintendo may be overestimating the success of its latest handled offering this is where i talked about there's a little bit of a danger if you flood the market that's why i wanted to bring up this article so can the switch 2 be as successful as the original the handheld gaming market is booming right now, which could be both a blessing and a curse for the eventual launch of the Nintendo Switch follow-up. The Nintendo Switch has been an unrivaled success, selling over 141 million units worldwide since its launch in March of 2017. However, the secret to the prosperity of Nintendo's handle may not entirely lie with its first-party exclusive titles, unique Joy-Con motion controllers, or its hybrid home console design. When the original Switch released, the handheld console landscape was remarkably barren, with the closest handheld offering from a major manufacturer being the PlayStation Vita, which released from Sony in 2011. In 2024, the polar opposite is true. Valve's release of the Steam Deck in 2022 has seen an explosion in handheld PC gaming options following, many of which offer both impressive portable performances and simply unrivaled library of games spanning multiple decades, not to mention increasing access to first-party Xbox and PlayStation titles. And speaking of Microsoft and Sony, rumors of a PlayStation Vita 2 and on Xbox handheld console persist as traditional PC manufacturers like Asus, MSI, Lenovo, and more seek to build up the market of the future with ROG Ally X, MSI Claw 8 AI, and the Legion Go 2 releases. Currently expected to arrive in 2025, the Switch 2 will release into a market that is flourishing with alternatives to Nintendo's handheld. On top of that, we're already seeing many of these devices receive hardware refreshes and deliver expanded RAM or processor upgrades, which, should this become the norm, could see Nintendo's hardware quickly overshadowed post-release. One major factor in Nintendo's favor is that hulking hardware hasn't been one of the brand's key selling points for several generations now. The Wii was greatly outperformed by the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, and both the Wii U and Switch were easily outperformed by PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Similarly, we won't be expecting the Nintendo Switch 2 to outpace the current ninth generation offerings in PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X or S. Nintendo's biggest advantage comes from its first party games and often from the unique and innovative ways it approaches its hardware. However, the fact remains, the Switch 2 will be releasing among much more similar consoles. Nintendo won't be able to rely on the fact that they're the only major offering in the mix that's portable anymore but they will have incredible brand awareness and loyalty to give them a considerable boost, at least initially. 
Whether that's enough momentum for Nintendo to keep Switch 2 at the head of the pack or not remains to be seen, but an increasingly busy market could make next year's Switch 2 release one of the toughest product launches in the company's recent history. Now, I think it's fair that we can't ignore that there is a lot of handheld stuff going on right now. You know, yes, Sony and Xbox might both end up launching a product, but really, you know, if you're bringing up Steam Deck and all the rest, there is a lot of competition in that handheld space. And it's very true that here in 2024, Nintendo has a much taller hill to climb in terms of competition than they did launching this platform back in 2017. But I want to note something about all of this, and I have kind of glanced around for a cumulative sales data of all these various handheld devices this quarter alone nintendo uh, is projected to move around two million like we're about we're about to get updates in august so this first quarter of this current fiscal year nintendo was projected to sell around two million nintendo switches i want to put that in perspective if you combine all the total sales of all handheld gaming pcs from the launch of steam deck all the way to today you'd get right around 2 million in sales, which is what Nintendo just did in a quarter. So we have to keep it like in perspective how large and how appealing Nintendo stuff is in comparison to all these other handheld PCs. And I'm not trying to diss the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally or any of the rest of the, the Lenovo Go thing. I'm, I literally think they're actually really neat devices. And yes, they have access to decades of games thanks to P being a PC. But I, I just think that people are overestimating a bit how much those competitions really impact Nintendo. Uh, I do think that the Switch 2 is perfectly positioned right now to really just take off, in my opinion. I, I, I think that that competition is showing one thing that will always hurts the market a little bit. When there's too much of one thing, consumers get confused. Which handheld PC do you buy? Which one's the best? If you're just looking to make niche products, it doesn't matter. But look at the phone market. There's a billion types of phones, but there's two mega successful pillar phones, right? You have your Samsung ones and your Apple, and then you kind of have all the rest. And that doesn't mean there's not success with those other ones. They're just not quite as successful. And Nintendo right now feels like it's one of those pillars, right? Let's say Nintendo is Apple and PlayStation is Samsung. Those are two pillars. Everyone else is kind of fighting for the scraps outside of those pillars of gaming. So I do think that Nintendo is actually positioned very, very well to be just fine. You might go, well, you just mentioned that. What about Xbox? Xbox, it has its its audience. I would say, you know, maybe the Google phone, if you want to compare it to that, keep that mobile comparison, the Google phones have actually found a little bit of a market that would be kind of where I would slot Xbox in. So again, though, the two pillars aren't going anywhere. The PlayStation 5 is massively successful. PlayStation 6 will probably be massively successful. The Switch is massively successful. Nintendo now puts all of its games on a single platform. That's going to end up boosting the next platform. And yes, Nintendo systems are one of the only ones on the market whose sales are dependent on first-party software, and Nintendo keeps delivering first-party software. In fact, they've been delivering a Nintendo-exclusive game every month the Switch has been out. Every month, on average, 12 games a year. Insane. Absolutely insane. No, those aren't all brand new. There's ports and remasters, but you can only play them on Nintendo. That's the crazy thing. So Nintendo has an insane pace of releases that looks to continue with Switch 2. That's exclusive content. You have to buy their system to play legally, at least. So leave it at that. That's where we're going to kind of leave things. I want to get your guys' thoughts on all of this stuff down in the comments below, because to me, this is all insane. What we're talking about right now is absolutely insane. Um, the Switch 2 is coming, guys, or whatever they call this damn thing. It's on its way. Nintendo's talking about making a shitload of them, right? Uh, leaks and stuff are probably going to start spinning up the closer and closer we get to reveal. Once the thing's revealed, the floodgates are going to open. Third parties are going to announce all these damn games for the system. There's going to be marketing campaigns and everything in between. And meanwhile, we're still talking about the new Zelda game, Echoes of Wisdom, coming in September. We're still talking about, obviously, Metroid, Prime, 4, Mario Party, Jamboree, and so many more, like... Nintendo is in a very good position right now. We just have to hope they don't fumble the ball. Have a great Switch 2 reveal. Please.
Don't mess it up. All right, folks, that's going to be it. Hope to catch you guys tonight. Uh, we're going to be live streaming at 8 p.m. or maybe a little bit early, maybe 7.30 p.m. Central Time tonight. It is our second stream of the week uh, where we're celebrating my birthday. My birthday is coming up on Friday, so we're do doing you know an all-week celebration. So last night was stream one, tonight is stream two, and then our final stream will be on my actual birthday on the 5th. Uh, so, yeah, hope you guys tune in. No idea what the topics are going to be yet tonight. Obviously, there'll be a Q&A &A and all that, but we'll come up with some cool Nintendo stuff to talk about. Uh, maybe we'll talk about Echoes of Wisdom because I actually am getting a little tired of people trying to tell me it's not a mainline Zelda game. So we need to maybe have a conversation about what makes something a mainline Zelda game uh, because, man... I keep seeing this conversation come up, and it's kind of frustrating to someone who's been covering the Legend of Zelda series since 1998. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next video.